So let's uh, start this off. All right, this is episode number six of the Sports Consigliere's uh, podcast. My name is Jim Whalen. Alongside of me is my co-host, the voice of Woodridge football, the high, Woodridge High School flag football coach, my friend, my buddy, my pal, my big toe, my consigliere, Jerry Calla. Jerry, how you doing? Wow, James, James, what an intro. Yeah. Well, only some, it, listen, only it, somebody it, with, a, with a button down shirt could do an intro yeah, like that. So. Well, exactly. Well, Coles, yeah. Coles is having a good, a good sale. He said, Yeah, listen, you wear it well, my friend. That's it. So, but uh, this is the first time we're back in uh, a few episodes. We had Senator Lesniak. I had um, the number one defender of all time for the Georgetown Hoyers, Gene Too Smooth Smith. And then we had on Bobby Martin as well. So this yeah, is our so first show in, in a few shows that we're back since together. The, since the Knicks. And uh, I'm recording this from my home studio. Uh, my wife calls it like the Merv Griffin thing in a Seinfeld episode. Like there I found, you go. The, I found all the stuff in the garbage, so I made a, stu- a home studio. But uh, Hopefully you have no pets coming in. <laughs> uh, I locked the door, so I don't know. Yeah, there you go. You're safe so, then. Yeah. But uh, – Let's talk about the Knicks a little bit about uh, overall the season. Injuries were definitely a uh, an issue towards the end. You know, Brunson being out. They yeah, without without they question. Weren't, they, weren't mean, gonna, they weren't going to – they weren't going to – uh, you know, they, they weren't going to – you know, he, he was the the, stir, the straw that stirred the drink, so. Without question. I mean, the curtain came down on them. It was a valiant effort. It was a nice run. Um, you know, it was t- – it's always tough to lose to Indiana. Um. You know, but with that being said, you know, it was a good run. You know, where they go next year will be interesting. Um, You know, I think you get caught up in these playoff runs. And, you know, it was a good story, the Nova 3. And, you know, you forgot about Julius Randle. Um, You know, Robinson went down. I mean, you know, yeah. um, the, the end of them. But, you know, Randle, listen, you know, say what you want. A lot of people felt the chemistry might have been a little bit better without Randall. But bottom line is yeah, the guy is there the, was that there was that argument out there that uh, you know maybe there Randall was. Out. You know, but <laughs> the stat line is the stat line. I mean, yeah. you know, he is, you know, good for you know, uh, you know, a, tw- a, tw- a close to a twenty and ten, you know, on a on a nightly uh, basis. And you know, where they go from there, I mean, you know, listen, he's not going to give it to you. As we know, you know, I'm not a particular huge Randall guy, but, you know, he's not going to give it to you on the defensive end of the court. And, you know, kind of that's where, the, you know, these Knicks, if you will, kind of made their bones, which was, uh, I think, a, a big part of why they were so embraced this time is because it brought us back to the old, you know, Knicks of yesteryear where, you know, defense was, you know, paramount. And that's, you know, what's determined playoff runs. And, you know, listen, Indiana – You know, we just mentioned we had Gene Smith on. When I had Gene Smith from Georgetown on, we talked about Nova's shooting percentage, you know, against Georgetown in the 85 uh, NCAA final. And, you know, give it to Indiana. They shot, you know, they were lights out, their shooting percentage. It was unbelievable. And, you know, with the injuries and with everything, the Knicks needed every break. I mean, I really think that, you know, they gave it everything they had in game six. Um, You know. And, uh, And good, good call on you with Alec Burks. So, I mean, that was uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. You know uh, know what? That was, hold on. That was the only thing I think my own, our last show, if I remember correctly, that was my only prediction that I got right. I was wrong with the Knicks um, winning the series in seven. um, But I was right about Alec Burks. I mean, it is a great story at the NBA level, a guy that could have buried his head, you know, in a towel at the end of the bench, you know, rose to the occasion. Yeah. And and he he played well. Story. He played well in the final game. He basically kept he them in. They, I mean, listen, they, they lost, you know, uh, you know, the injuries mount up, you know, Brunson yeah. out, Robinson out, you know, the, the team was, it, 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 he he definitely kept them in the game as long as long Absolutely. as possible. Absolutely. They had the one, the one run where they cut it, I believe, to nine. He was a big part of that. And then they had, you know, and then they just, you know, you can only make so many, so many runs, so to speak, you know, in a, in a playoff game. And, you know, it just didn't happen. And, you know, um, I wasn't surprised by what Boston did to them. Um, you know, and 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 to be honest with you, I I you know as much as I think I would have liked to believe uh, the Knicks would have had a chance, I I don't think the Knicks would have fared any better against Boston than the Pacers did. 
Well, I guess one thing, it gave us optimism for next year. Uh, it did. He t- touched a little bit about Randall. I mean, he took a chance on Randall a couple of years ago. He's 29 years old. I think we talked about this uh, probably in one of our conversations that I think Thibodeau called Calipari and and because and, he was kind of in NBA, you know, Netherland. And then, uh, right. you know, they, they, they plucked him out and, and he did spark an interest on there. But he's 29 years old. Do you see them – still making an impact with with Randall. Well, I mean, I don't think you're going to be able to move him. That's number 1. You know, I don't I don't think the market for him. You would need as far as, you know, listen, are they going to build around, you know, the the team around him going forward? Are they going to I should say, are they going to retool with him? You know, I think you're more or less they're married to him for for good, bad or indifferent. You're going to need a situation um, where he plays well, okay, kind of like a few years ago when they had Morris, <coughs> okay, and then they shipped him to L.A., I believe, okay, where he has a good start, and then you you get rid of him then. You, yeah, marketable value. He, his, oh. his value goes up. I mean, you're stuck with him. Um, the interesting thing is the Knicks do have um, two first-round picks, um, you know, which is a unique situation considering, you know, where they where they kind of ended up. Um, but I just don't I don't want to beat up Randall. You know, he was hurt um, to a lesser degree. I'm going to probably get crushed for this. But, you know, Randall to me is just not a winning player. He's a diet version of Zach Randolph. He's a stats guy, um, you know, and I just, you know, unfortunately, the Knicks are just stuck with him. And, you know, if. if if things turn out, he comes into camp, has a good camp, they get off to a good start with him. I wouldn't be surprised if they move them. Yeah. You know, well, I think that, you know, they got the two first round picks, you know, and they're not gonna, you know, they're not gonna do anything that's gonna, you know, interfere or threaten their core, if you will. They're they're Nova three. And I think, you know, I don't know where Randall really fits in, you know, with, with those three players. I really don't. And I think that's that's uh not something that they want to experiment with. And if they can move them, they're going to move them. But, you know, anyway, getting, you know, moving forward now, like we said, you know, they wouldn't have had a chance, I think, against Boston. And, you know, um, they w- or I should say they wouldn't have fared much better than than Indiana did. And now that brings us to to Boston, you know, Dallas. So what's your what's your take on that? Well, you know, my my I know we talked off camera on this, but I just think that, um, you know, we have different philosophies i think uh you know uh Doncic is the second best player behind joe jokic in the nba and i just think that you know with kyrie he's playing on another level i mean he was here in brook uh, brooklyn it was kind of uh there was a lot of controversy him with the you know covid shots and 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 then he was in the fan he was in the crowd he wasn't playing you know so there was a lot of controversy i'm just hoping maybe he grew up and matured um, and then somehow Mark Cuban took a, took a chance on him. I, I'm looking at uh, Dallas, uh, and I know we posted on Instagram, you know, he, when he was in Brooklyn, he did the, uh, you know, he stomped on the, on the leprechaun. He did the, uh, the sage around, around the arena. So I, I'm, I'm looking at more like Dallas. I mean, I think that it's going to be Brown and um, <clears throat> Brown and, versus Doncic and Irving versus uh, uh, Tatum. Uh, what, uh, what's it? Tatum. Tatum, yeah, sorry. Uh, Duke and Tatum. And it's just be interesting because Irving's going back to Boston. Porzingis is going back to Dallas. Uh, they both left there. So I, I think that Irving's playing on another level. Uh, I know he had his troubles. Doncic has been injured. But uh, I know you you disagree. You have a different, uh, a different take on, on the finals. I like Boston. I mean, if Porzingis comes back, um, which I think all indications that he's going to come back, um, that really gives them the ability to spread the floor. You know, um, Dallas's role players are playing well. I I, I don't like Irving. Um, I don't. I should say I, I don't trust Irving. Um, you know, you talk about dancing on the leprechaun. I mean, everywhere the guy has gone, um, it's ended badly. Um, yes, he's playing. Very, very good basketball. Um, you know, Kyrie goes as Kyrie goes. And, you know, I think um, they're going to be in 
Um, it's going to be brutal. And I think in the end that Boston has enough pieces. I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to be, uh, you know, naive and say shut down, but I think they have enough pieces on the defensive end of the court, um, you know, to slow them down. But I do think um, Porzingis, you know, is really the key here. You know, they're a different team with him on the floor. Um, I also think that the quote-unquote easy path to the finals, there's two schools of thoughts on this, but the easy path to the finals that the Celtics have are going to help them. You know, they play a lot of games, you know, in the NBA. They really do. They got this in-season tournament. NBA season, as we know, is a grind. And I think the way Boston is built, um, you know, I think that really, really benefits them that they had an easier ride, uh, so to speak, to the finals. But, you know, it's going to be a great series. Um, you know, game one um, is, is, is tomorrow evening, Thursday evening. Um, and I think Boston – I think it goes six or seven. Yeah, I was going to say Dallas and six, and I just think that Ir- Irving. I, I just think he's just playing at another level. I mean, you know, I could be wrong. I'm wrong a lot, but I mean that that's that's what I'm looking at. I mean, you know, ha- having the Knicks, it's not a, a New York Boston thing. I mean, Boston's great. T- Tatum's a superstar. Brown's a superstar. You know, you have uh, Brad Stevens as their GM, who. Uh, Definitely probably one of the, one of the best basketball minds, uh, you know, right now in the NBA. You know, I agree. Taking taking the place of Riley, and uh, you know their their chemistry is there. So uh, so we'll wait and see what happens. But you know that starts that starts tomorrow. We're shooting this on on Wednesday, but uh, you know I I talked a little bit uh, just getting ready for the show. Bill Walton, you know, Bill Walton passed away. It's been about a week now. Um, he was the best high school player coming out of. Uh, at the time, he started at uh, UCLA and earned a Coach Wooden. Coach Wooden had a special relationship with him. Definitely in the hippie age, you know, uh, had that 88-0 run where Notre Dame uh, lost that game. Uh, you know, beat the game, they lost to Notre Dame. Um, down in uh, Houston, um, three national championships. Injuries kind of plagued his uh, professional career. He won uh, championship with Portland. I don't think they've been back since. I think that was 77. And then he won one when he teamed up with Bird, uh, McHale, Dennis Johnson, and Parrish, and, and Boston. And he really kind of was res- resulted as a kind of a role player. But uh, you talk a little bit about uh, Bill Walton and his impact on the game. I know some people, you know, at the, at the, at the time, protests and everything else, uh, he was definitely somebody who, you know, went against the grain. A lot of people didn't like him for that. But, I mean, Healthy, he's probably one of the best basketball players that probably ever walked on the court. Well, his collegiate career is second to, to none. Um, like you said, he, you know, again, it was a different time in the country. You know, he embraced, you know, the the, the quote-unquote counterculture at that time. Um, he was definitely in the right state. Um, he was definitely at the right university. You know, John Wooden let him, you know, be an individual. Um, you know, didn't try to, you know, lock him down, so to speak. Um, but, you know, he was good for basketball. I don't think there's any denying that. I mean, you know, he really had a very, very good career. I mean, UCLA, hands down. I mean, you know, he it, it was, you know, second to, to Lou Alcindor, you know, to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I mean, you know, he's probably, you know, what, their second greatest player, you know, all time, you know. Um Goes to Portland, gets drafted by Portland. The feet did him in. The foot injuries, very frustrating situa- situation um, in Portland. But I think a really good, and Larry Bird speaks very favorably of him. You know, you talk about him being a role player. You know, he was the sixth man of the year for the Boston Celtics. You know, to, to, to really uh, have a career come full circle you know, we talked to a lesser, much lesser degree about Alec Burks, you know, hanging in there in the, you know, for the pl- coming back for the playoff run after falling out of the rotation. You know, here's a guy that was, you know, arguably coming out of college, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, goes to Boston, you know, fit, you know, basically adheres to their culture because they were successful before he got there, um, was a great locker room guy. Um, a lot of people have him. 
Um, you know, a lot of people really think of him as the, uh, you know, as, as like a Maxwell waving the towel, Cedric Maxwell waving the towel, but he was the sixth man of the year. You know, he came in, um, you know, he did what he had to do. He was a very good passer, um, you know, and he conformed, you know, to the, to the Celtic culture and, you know, won himself a championship. Now you move, you know, after his career, I mean, he was entertaining on TV, um, you know, as a color announcer, you know, yeah, definitely. Uh, Really, you know, doing the college game. Um, but let's for, let's remember, you know, uh, when, in the NBC era of the NBA, you know, he was in the studio. He was used a lot. Um, obviously, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite Frank Caliendo impressions, this is how you know somebody makes it big, is Frank Caliendo doing Bill Walton, uh, you know, talking about, you know, Detlef Shrimp and, you know, and a few other things. And, you know, unbelievable. And, you know, just to... You know, the guy was an icon. He was an icon on TV. He was an icon on the court. He was an icon in the NBA, the college game. Um, you know, and, and um, you know, he really represented, I would say, as far as the NBA goes. I mean, you want to talk about maybe Bill Bradley, because, um, you know, people forget Bill Bradley coming into the Knicks. You know, he did a lot being a Princeton guy. You know, he was really involved in a lot of causes off the court. But, you know, Bill Walton really paved the way, I guess, for the athlete you know, you want to say, you know, at that time, you know, you had Muhammad Ali, you know, Bill Walton was, you know, a much lesser extent, you know, not as loud as boisterous as Ali. But, you know, I think certain people gravitated to him, you know, the younger people. I mean, the Grateful Dead. I mean, it's a, you know, interest, interesting story. You know, he's a cartoon like character and, um, you know, he's definitely going to be missed, you know, by the game. You know, it was definitely, you know, definitely a loss for, for basketball. I mean, Charles Barkley's probably something more, yeah. more of a, somebody like is equal. But I mean, just like hearing him tell the stories and then just like he sells it with such, such uh, description and such detail that, you know, it, it, to me, it, you know, he really could tell a story and, and, and he really had a special relationship with, with Coach Wooden. So, I mean, Wooden, you know, Absolutely. Like this button, up, button up guy had his, uh, you know, pillars of success. And there is, you know, Bill Walton, you know, embracing the hippie hippie movement and and you know doing student protests and everything else. So, so he's definitely an icon. I know we probably you know uh, probably beating this to, to death, but I mean, I think that you know he's he he was who he was. He left his mark on the game. So, absolutely. And again, you know, staying with the NBA team. You know, we covered the Knicks a little bit. We covered the Pacers a little bit. We covered. Um, you know, we talked about Dallas and Boston and, you know, you talk about ratings and, and everything else. You know, the biggest news today is that it looks like TNT is going to be phased out. Um, the NBA, uh, NBA deal is worth the new TV deal is worth seventy six billion dollars. Seventy six billion. That's a billion with a B. Billion with a B. So you're looking at. The salary cap will explode again. You know, this kind of is breaking news uh, today. It says that, um, according to the Wall Street Journal, the NBA has agreed to a deal with NBC, ESPN, and, of course, Amazon, 11 years, $76 billion, shattering even the high end of expectations. Well, so, I... fig- so basically we're looking at the figure is almost seven bi- about $6.9 billion a year. It's a 265% increase um, over the last deal. Um, and the TNT, as well as Disney, was paying a combined $2.6 billion a year ago to air NBA games. And I think that should really um, sum up when you know people are like, oh, you know, the college game is passing the NBA, maybe in certain areas, but I think $76 billion – $7 billion a year says the NBA is, you know, doing very well for themselves. And Well, uh, and one thing uh, I heard Hubie Brown speak, and I think I invited you to a couple. He was at, he used to speak at a VFW in Linden, New Jersey. He used to come up he, from this area. And then just hear him talk about, he really uh, gives David Stern a a lot of credit for expanding the game. He said in the, in the country of China, in the NBA finals, they had 350 million people watch 
the NBA Finals. 350 million people. So it's an international game. You know, Hubie Brown really uh, says how he expanded the game, how he made uh, these uh, agreements with uh, FIBA basketball all throughout. So it's an international sport, much like the Premier League or La Liga and soccer. Basketball is an international sport. Just look at the number of basketball players that are coming in in the NBA. The two we talked mentioned before, the two top players are European. So right. it, it's an international sport, and therefore, you know what? What better way to have the growth of sport is is through television and and through sure. everything else. But definitely, it definitely, you know, he David Stern really really put it in a different trajectory. And actually, Adam Silver was kind of his protege. Is probably doing much of the same. Absolutely, and you could also, if you look back on it, maybe you throw Pete Rozelle in there. Um, but David Stern, probably the most influential uh, commissioner of all the sports. I would say you'd have to put Roselle in there. Yeah. Um, you know, but I mean, you know, again, you know, I remember, you know, talking to old time Nick fans, 73 Nick, um, you know, NBA finals, you know, Nick Lakers. It was on tape delay. Yeah. You, you know, it wasn't even live. I mean, I think that kind of went um, where the playoffs weren't on regularly until like you know until you got into the 80s um you know one thing that stern i remember that got he got criticized for for um was getting rid of if you remember the first round of the playoffs was best of three and you know it was exciting because one plays eight eight wins that first game game two is, is an elimination game yeah you know but he went every and then the next round was five and then only the conference finals and then the NBA finals were seven. He went seven games, obviously, for obvious reasons, TV, marketing, the the advertising, the whole thing, right? And he got criticized at the time. And lo and behold, every league, you know, every league, you know, hockey went that route and, you know, expanding the playoffs to 16 teams. I mean, we could go, you know, on and on and on about, you know, David Stern's uh, accomplishments. I mean, well, also, too, you, you look at the time in the 70s, you know, you had the ABA after the ABA merger and you know, attendance wasn't great in the 70s for the NBA. It was really was really hurting. And I think, you know, this has been well documented, you know, the rivalry of Magic and Bird. Really, without doubt, without, without, you know, without with a Boston, doubt. And with Boston and L.A. really really uh set the tone and also you had you know dr j you had you had the personality you had these great players and then that led to michael jordan now we're in to lebron james so um you talk, want to talk a little bit about lebron james 40 you think he's going to hang it up or you think he's going to wait for Bronny to come in or i think he waits to see um what Bronny does um jj reddick who i like even though he was a duke guy is rumored now. I don't know if you saw earlier today to be possible and possibly in consideration for the Laker job. Um, you know, I don't know what less LeBron, podcast and less, less competition for us. So there you go. Yeah. Um, but I don't know what LeBron does. You know, listen, I'm I'm at a I'm at a LeBron overload myself. You know, how many people is he going to get fired? Um, you know, I, I mean, listen, obviously his career, he's had a great career. Um, I think he's very reluctant to pass the baton. Um, you know, again, second year in a row, he's having a coach replaced. Um, you know, where he goes, I think now it's just to see what happens with Bronny. I mean, you know, well, where he's going to go is is anybody's guess. Well, do you think Bronny, we touched a little bit about this in the pregame, you know, you think Bronny is going to be a little more like Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark's getting a lot of um, attention in the NBA, good and bad. So, I mean. Well, I mean, like- here's here, here here's the thing, I, and, and I'm going to disagree with you on this. I'm not going to compare Bronny to Caitlin Clark because that would be, in my opinion, disrespectful to Caitlin Clark. Okay. Caitlin yeah, Clark. True. Caitlin Clark. There's a lot of Caitlin Clark hate. There's a lot of Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark, um, you know, uh, bashing. But you know, name somebody. I, I mean, the WNBA. I would is say Red Grinch. The name that comes to mind, Red Grinch. 
Red Grange. You know, basically, yeah. he, he was at University of Illinois. He went to the NFL, and he got eyeballs to the sets. And if you look at the WNBA, talk about the NBA. Talk about the NBA ratings. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, first time they had uh, five uh, f- five games over a million viewers. First time in, in 16 years. What, Their viewership without, is Without awful. question. And again, you know, I think her coming in, she's – yes, she's not the only one, so we don't want to be disrespectful. Yeah you know, to the rest of the class, right. You know, um, you know, Reese in Chicago, you know, though they're going to, they're going to take this league, you know, this league has improved, you know, from where it started. Right. I think there's less players looking to go overseas, you know, the whole Becky Hammond drama going to Russia, playing in Russia. Obviously she did that for the money, they're paid more money. And then she parlayed that plane for the national team in, in Russia, you know, that sort of thing. But I think the league is healthy. You have a lot of players, you know, Ionescu, Stewart, you look at the Liberty, you know, the, this, this is the best the league has been. And say what you want, Clark has generated, you know, or, or helped generate the interest. You know, Reese has done a good job. I mean, you know, these are larger than life college um, you know, athletes that performed on the big stage in college year in and year out. And, you know, so far, yeah, Clark has had a few bad games. She's getting roughed up. It's the, it's the pro game. It's different than the, than the college game. You know, they're, they're well, going to let them at, play. You, you know, you have to get – you, you look at your teammates from Iowa compared to WA. I mean, these girls can play. You know, yeah. women can play. I mean, I mean and yeah. again, like uh, – you know, you talk about it like when we had on, you know, uh, Bobby Martin, you know, University of Pittsburgh, great. He said, when you get to that next level, you know, people are playing, you know, for their livelihoods, feed your family, you know, for your future. You know, you want to use the word cutthroat. I mean, it's it, it's a business. I mean, you know, they're out there, you know, somebody's going to try to make a name, you know, for themselves. You know, hey, listen, I, I played well against Caitlin Clark. Oh, you know, that really resonated and resonates and you know, use that as, you know, getting, getting coverage and getting, you know, getting attention. But I I don't know how you could be in the WNBA and not at least embrace it. You may not like her, right? You don't like her. You don't like her. It's, it's a part of sports, right? I'm sure name, 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 you know, I'm sure people didn't like Tom Brady. Tom Brady was good for the NFL, great for the NFL. You know, I'm sure people don't like Kansas city. They don't like Mahomes. They don't like the whole Kelsey Taylor Swift thing. That's good for the NFL. Yeah, Rob, no, Rob, that's Rob, not Rob, a good. dispute. You know, I do not like the Boston Celtics as a Knicks fan. It's good for basketball that the Celtics are doing well. It, it, it's good for basketball. You know, yeah. um, you know, I don't see how if you could be in the WNBA, you not at least. Oh, you know what? This is great. I don't like her. I want to beat her. Whatever. I can't stand her. I think she's smug. Whatever the case may be, she is great for the league hands down the league has gotten better you know you look at the amount i mean the college spillover to the players that are you know did well in college you know it, it is hands down you know i think we're way past the days of you know the cheryl swoops and the you know uh, people coming out and looking to go elsewhere yeah well even you know, more so WNBA is is you know here to stay they're on tv uh, more and more, there's more regional coverage. Um, there's more national coverage. And, you know, Caitlin Clark is only going to drive that forward. I mean, the fact that season tickets were sold out before she was officially selected, the jersey was back ordered. I think the jersey is back ordered to, to Christmas now. Whatever's out there is out there. I mean, they can't they can't produce them enough. And well, it's a great story. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, if you look at Caitlin Clark's impact to the Indianapolis, the city of um, – it, they're saying somewhere about a hundred million dollars just from attendance, probably, you know, oh, sure. Ticket, ticket sales, Jersey sales, you know, before game, post game, everything else. So, I mean, a hundred million dollars to, to Indianapolis, which is, which is huge. Absolutely. Uh, and then, you know, um, some of the other uh, podcasts that are out there, uh, all that smoke, I, I, I follow that one. Um, Matt Bourne said that, you know, some of the players on, her team should protect it. Uh, Clark, do you, do you agree with that? I, I agree. I agree. This is scary. Now I agree with Matt Barnes. Uh, 100%. <laughs> He's a hundred percent. Correct. Yeah. Matt Barnes. I've never forget Matt Barnes coming 
to the Knicks. Larry Brown's the coach. Gave him an opportunity. Of course, Matt Barnes had success. Much, much more success elsewhere. But he's 100% right. I think it's a bad look. You know, it's a bad look. And, you know, and 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 that's that's a part of the game. You know, they were making a statement. Um, and, and, you know, a statement had to be made back. And it, and it really wasn't. She was kind of, uh, you know... It was like a uh, you want to go back to the old WWF WWE now, yeah. um, you know what what Piper and, and Bob Orton did to Paul Orndorff. They kind of left him left him for dead, you know, out on an island by himself with you know multiple people surrounding her, and you know, I don't know. I mean, it's too early to really make an issue out of that, but it's a fair point. And, you know, Matt Barnes is, is, is a hundred percent right. Well, you, gotta, said, you gotta, you gotta protect your superstars. That's absolutely. The you yeah, gotta protect your teammates, let alone your superstar. But yeah, you know, again, a really exciting time for basketball. I mean, we talked about, you know, the college game and um, you know, the, the TV rights and the finals and the NBA playoffs. Now we're getting into the WNBA, you know, um, there's interest there, you know, and I think after the NBA finals that that'll continue and that'll kind of take us, you know, to, um, you know, to summer camps. So, well, before summer camps to the NBA draft, that'll be, you know, that'll be here before you know it. And, uh, well, you know, things are going well, hence $76 billion. Things are going well for the NBA. And when things are going very well for the NBA, you know, that's going to spill down. And now, you know, the WNBA has some stupid superstars. They have a lot of marketable players. Um, and it, and it's, you know, as long as both leagues stay kind of in step with each other, you know, I think the WNBA will keep growing. Well, um, and it, also was, it also was announced that Carmelo Anthony, is, I guess, is going to lead a, uh, uh, a second uh, women professional uh, basketball league. So, you know, with their success, obviously somebody's going to copy it. So that's that's something that, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. It, you know, obviously – WNBA is is riding a wave right now. We'll see if they're successful. I mean, there's there's somebody's always going to be trying to reinvent the wheel. So we'll we'll see. Absolutely. See how that goes. Absolutely. Um, and I think the one thing is, and 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 I have not heard about Carmelo uh, looking to do that. But you talk about what the NBA has done over the years. You know, there's been independent basketball, USA, you know, USL basketball. Uh, the three C- on three, that three on three tournament, everything. The C- well, the three on three, that's that's like a you know that's a whole separate ball of wax. But like, I'm talking like the the old CBA, the old Continental Basketball Arena. All, all those leagues basically sputtered, and really, what you have is you know more or less the, the G League, which is really not the G League anymore. But you can't really operate a professional basketball league in the United States that is not controlled by the NBA. It's just too powerful. And I think the same, the same is to be said about the WNBA. I mean, the WNBA is still fighting to really establish its identity. It's gotten better. It's moving in the right direction, you know, rapidly now with these superstars. I mean, I don't, I don't know what Carmelo's. It it looks like it's a, it looks like it's a three on three tournament unrivaled. So, uh, and you there's a place for that. I mean, Alex Morgan and, um, Carmelo, uh, Carmelo Anthony, women's three. So, I mean, listen, that that's uh, that's something you see that in a college game. A lot of these alumni come and play for these, you know, jackpot uh, um, first place, first place right. prizes. But there's definitely right. there's definitely uh, an interest. So, so I mean, it, you know, it's good for the women's game. It gets more more girls yeah. playing, more girls expo- exposure. But uh, absolutely. But, uh, but last but not least, I know you're not a hockey fan, but just talk a little bit about the the Stanley Cup. Even though it starts on Saturdays. You know, I got my Devils blanket out here. They, 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 uh, they agreed on their coach Sheldon Keith. So uh, I know they got a lot of superstars. Don't have a goal yet. That's that's uh, probably going to be the the linchpin for winning the Stanley Cup. The Rangers. I don't know if you're watching any games. You know, Panarin 112 points. Kreider is a Jed, and Panarin basically laid an egg. You know, I know. Um, you know, uh, Lafreniere and uh, uh, Trocheck had great series, but you know, the, the Panthers goalie, um, really, really shut him down, uh, Proposky. And then, uh, you know, he's going to be the Vesna trophy. I think Sisterkin Rangers goalie really kept him in, in the series. And, um, you know, Florida, I, you know, I, I don't know if you have any predictions on Florida, but I think Florida is going to be 
you know, the next Stanley Cup champion. They're, they're playing Edmonton. You know, Connor McDavid um, had a lot of legacy there with, uh, you know, the Edmonton world. Or Gretzky, Messier, you know, won five cups in the 80s. So um, a very good offensive team. Their, their goalie's not as good. But uh, wait and see what happens. Uh, you know, Edmonton won at 84, 85, 87, 88, 89, and 90. So, and, you know, Connor McDavid's, uh, the, you know, the face of – face of the league. So um, at 31 points in, in the playoffs, so I don't know uh, what your take is. You saw the Rangers any game or if uh, I, I any- did, I did watch the Rangers. Um, you know, I, I, you know, when I was younger, I was really into the Rangers. Um, I, I actually went to the parade in 94. Yeah, so John, John Muckler kind of, uh, you know, sucked the life out of me at that time when he took over. And that's kind of like when I started walk- watching hockey less and less, but, um, you know, uh, you mentioned Edmonton. You know, they're they're a historic franchise. I mean, the uh, the amount of players that came over, you know, for the '94 Stanley Cup, you know, Ranger team was was unbelievable. Um, and then even after that, um, funny thing is, I I had a Panthers shirt, believe it or not, a John <laughs> Van Viesburg Panthers T-shirt. Yeah, well, that was my that was my guy growing up. That Beesburg. was our guy. That was Save Van Breesbrook. You know, we had, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Rosen saying that, Save Van Breesbrook, save. So that was like, our, that was our call in school. Was, save Van Breesbrook. You know, when we throw something, you know, a paper or something like yeah. that, we say, Save Van Breesbrook. So, and then Richter. But, you know, it was happy to see in 96, and I posted on our Instagram page about Van Breesbrook. Yeah. I guess he got taken the expansion draft and how he, he let him in and the rats, you know, the rats yeah. kind of came on. on yeah, absolutely. Life. So, um, but they were the runner-up last year. Uh, the Vegas, I don't want to see an expansion team win, but uh, I mean, with Vegas winning, but I think it might be Florida's year. So I'm going to say Florida in, in, in six, you know, Rangers, uh, you know, I, I think you have to be excited. They're, they were good from top to bottom. You know, Rempe came in and really pounded on some people. More so were like a team like the Devils had to get a an enforcer out there. So, and Shesterkin, and, you know, he's also a Vesna Trophy one or two years ago. So, I mean, it was a lot to like about – uh, you know, about the Rangers. So uh, coming from the Devils fan. So, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens, but uh, I don't know, Jerry, you have any more thoughts on the Stanley cup, uh, Stanley cup? Uh... I, I am going to, I am going to watch. Um, and I will, uh, I will root for Edmonton. Yeah. Well, and also Edmonton's in story. They fired a coach in, in November, you know, so they had an interim co- coach came in. And, I uh, have to find my, my Marty McSorley, uh, teddy bear somewhere so <laughs> you talk about an enforcer you know yeah. it was Gretzky's personal bodyguard on the ice yeah but anyway Jimmy listen it was a great show we covered a lot of things I mean I think uh correct me if I'm wrong here I think what we want to do to our view of do for our viewers is we we've discussed the NFL um early on we've discussed the NHL a very little bit we discussed the NBA we had college basketball guests on. We had uh, our last guest, Senator Lesniak, um, talk about uh, legalized gambling. And I think what we're going to focus on in our next episode is a um, we'll give a, a, a quick snippet is the very exciting, entertaining uh, 1990s Yankee documentary um, that is on uh, Peacock TV. So that'll be our next episode. Um, the documentary is three episodes. I watched it, um, Jimmy and I. I don't know if Jimmy watched it yet. We lived it. Uh, yeah, we, I watched. I watched the first one. So yes, I mean, we, it, it's it's they they did a great job, and I, I don't want to get get into it too much here. But um, you know, again, in closing, that'll be our next ep- episode seven. We will talk about that documentary because there are a lot. There's a lot to pick apart there that helped go forward. Most organizations would take that those stories and what was going on could have really set you back even further, but, and it, it's, it's a, it's a great, it's a great story and is a story within a story. So. Well, um, and also I think as a Yankee fan, everybody realizes where you were when, when uh, Steinbrenner got there. Huge moment. Huge moment. Oh, and then that some, some people argue that stick Michael was able to do his thing. You know, he would have traded yeah. away Jeter and only and on the form system. So. Well, we'll get into that next episode. Um, yeah. But anyway, we'll close this out. This is episode number six of uh, Sports Consiglieres. Uh I'm your host, uh, Jim Whalen, also with my co-host, uh, Jerry Calla. Find us on social media at Sports Consiglieres uh, on Instagram, also on Facebook. Uh, also, check in the notes. I'm going to send 
Dave Sturcio, who's still our producer, still helped me out on this episode with some technical difficulties. Hopefully everything uh, lasts for the next five or 10 minutes as, as uh, we put this uh, close. We'll put in the show notes our contact information. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, if you want to come on, promote, uh, promote something on uh, promote something having a good idea for for the show please please contest contest contacts in the show notes also i think i'd be remiss it's june 5th tomorrow is june 6th it's the 80th anniversary of the d-day invasion so uh salute to all the war two vets vets out there uh you know you know 80 80 years definitely save uh, western civilization civilization so uh we couldn't find any war or two guests that wanted to come on so i swung and missed on that but find this episode on Chop Sports Media with all the other episodes. Also, if you're interested in uh, podcasting or photography or at home uh, podcasting, anything else, contact Dave Sturcio. He's going to have an event also in July. Uh, tickets are selling fast to that event at the uh, Tiki Bar uh, Rumble at the Shore. Uh, uh, so, War at the Shore, I believe it is, going to be wrestling. So, this is uh, Jimmy and Jerry signing off, episode number six. Look forward to you. Uh, speaking next to you next, next we'll see week. you next time, everybody. Let's go, Yanks. Take care. Take care.